reborn through baptism. All right. And so, let's begin this way. Lord, sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17. In Mark chapter 1, that was read a little bit earlier, the gospel for today, I'd like to read 9 through 11 again. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. And so it all begins, too. You see, with Jesus being baptized in the Jordan River, he began his very public and earthly ministry at that time. Before that, we don't have records of, of miracles. We don't have records of stories of Jesus and his teaching. No, but it all begins following his baptism. And so it is with your baptism and with mine. Whether you were baptized, uh, your parents brought you to the baptismal font in their hands uh, as a, an infant, a child, whether uh, you came as a youth or an adult uh, and you had faith in Jesus Christ, but you knew that you wanted to fulfill his command to be baptized, and so you were baptized. And in baptism and through the gift of faith God gives us, we've been wonderfully reborn into the new creation and the new people that he wants us to be. And then into live that way. We'll talk about that a little bit more as well. Um, my favorite movie is It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart, Donna Reed, and Lionel Barrymore. And in this movie, um, the character of George Bailey, the main character, is played by Jimmy Stewart. Uh, the movie came out in 1946 right at the, the Christmas time of the year, so some often suggest it came out in 47, 46. Uh, critics panned it. No one watched it. No one went to see it. Um, there are parts of it that can be a little bit depressing and down, but it has a glorious, a glorious story to be told. What happens in this next clip that I want to show you is that George Bailey is at the bar. He's at Martini's, and he's just found out that $8,000 in 1946 dollars has been misplaced and it was supposed to be deposited into the bank by Uncle Billy who misplaced it. We know what happened to it but it's misplaced and he is fearful of, of scandal, of imprisonment and like we often do by the way we'll often turn inward to try to solve our problems that is not the way the Christian is called to, to operate or to live or work things out. No, we're called to look outwardly, first of all, in prayer. And that's what George does. He prays. But also, as the story unfolds, to look out for friends and other Christians and other people that can help us and to ask for their help, to seek their help. And, of course, that's what his wife Mary Donna Reed does later in the movie as well. But let me take you to this very dark and depressing moment when he is just a, a man at a bar with this cheerful music playing in the background and he is desperate and very depressed and later will think about taking his own life because he can't see any other way out. That's what happens when we turn inward. We got everything. They love you better now. 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 He's checking his life insurance policy. God. desperate man. The fact that he has his life insurance policy reflects what he's also thinking and what Henry Potter, the villain in the story, I guess we could call him Harry too, but Henry Potter tells George Bailey that he's worth more dead than alive because of his insurance policy. 
And that's George's great struggle. We'll get a little bit further on in just a moment, but our struggle is with sin. Our struggle is with uh, the evil that lurks around us and the sinful nature that we're born with and that we have to struggle with day in and day out day out. We struggle with the temptations and choices we make. And so we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. And now you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air. We're talking Satan here. The spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the, in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of our body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But, this is big, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. That's what our baptism does. It connects us with this new life that we have in Christ. It connects us with, with a whole other way of living in Christ. Because we were dead, and now we're alive. We were desperate characters in a real-life story and a reality, but now we are filled with hope and with promise because of what God in Christ has done. You know, it, it often makes me wonder that as George is given a gift by, of all things, an angel second class, Clarence Oddbody, who, if he can help George out, he will get his wings. This is not biblical, by the way, so that's not how it works. Uh, we don't become angels when we go to heaven either. That's not a Bible teaching either. Angels were created at creation or before. But in this story, George is given the gift to see what life would have been like had he never lived. What life would have been like had he never lived. Think about that for a few moments. I'm going to move on here, and I want to fill in some blanks for you also. Uh, wonderfully reborn through baptism blesses us with the forgiveness of sins. Is that a surprise to you? I don't think so. You know that in baptism your sins are forgiven. You know that that gift of faith in baptism beyond that you have is your connection to the forgiveness of sins, which with God is limitless and boundless. So let's be sure to know that we are in our baptism, we are marked with the sign of the cross. Our sins are washed from the inside out. We are cleansed. And we can remember our baptism every single day of our life as Dr. Martin Luther did. And in remembering his baptism, he was reminded that he was a sinner in need of a Savior. And he was reminded that he was forgiven and washed and cleansed of all of his sins through baptism because that's Jesus' promise. And so wonderfully reborn in baptism means that God forgives us all our sins. It means that we also can go to someone if we need to be reconciled to them and we can ask for their forgiveness. We can also be, as we've been forgiven, be forgiving people toward others who ask us to be forgiven. But don't forget this last part of that. And the last part is, is, is very important. I, I see, I sense that a lot of Christians, sons and daughters of the King of Kings, those who are members of the family of God, the redeemed of the Lord, don't forgive themselves for their past sins. There is no sin in your past that you need to, to bear any longer, carry any longer, and worst of all, bring into this new year of 2018. Leave it behind you. Yes, there's consequences to sin, but that consequences isn't that you're unforgiven. Because you are forgiven, you are made whole, you are cleansed, you are new. You are God's child. And so you are forgiven of your sins. Learn to forgive yourself as well. Secondly, wonderfully reborn through baptism also reminds us of the power that we have to live a changed life. Do you know what I mean? You have power to live a changed life. I, I don't know what superhero is your favorite. I don't know what superpower of a superhero, if you could have one superpower, what it would be. But what I do know is that all those are fake. None of those are real. None of those are something you can count on in any situation. But there's one supernatural power that you can count on, and that is the power of God that is within you. And that's a power. There's nothing more powerful than to know you're forgiven and to be able to forgive. 
but the power of God also leads you and enables you to live a changed life. Let me show you what a changed life for George Bailey looks like. After he gets that opportunity to see what life would be like, to live life as if he had never been born, and he realizes all the things that he did that were undone, and how it impacted and rippled across the people in Bedford Falls and far beyond, even a, a troop transport, that because he had not rescued his younger brother Harry from drowning in the ice in the pond, uh, if he had not lived to save him, then Harry would not have become a pilot in the war, Harry would not have shot down the other planes, the enemy planes that were shooting at him, bombing transports, and all those men would have died. But he gets, that, he gets to experience what life would have been like had he never lived. Now he's returned to, to the life the way it was. Nothing's changed. He's got all of his problems. The darkness is still there in this story, as you'll see when he says things like, oh, that must be a warrant for my arrest. How wonderful. Let's check it out. Yay! Hello, Bedford Falls! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, George! Merry Christmas, George! Merry Christmas, movie house! Merry Christmas, Emporium! Merry Christmas, you wonderful old building alone! New Year to you in jail. Go on home, they're waiting for you. <laughs> Mary! 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 Well, hello, Mr. Bank Examiner. How are you? Mr. Bailey, there's a deficit. I know, $8,000. George, I've uh, got a little paper. I'll bet it's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to jail. Merry Christmas, reporters. Are... Where's Mary? Mary! Oh, look at this wonderful old drafty house. Mary! 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 Have you, have you seen my wife? Mary! 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 Kids! Pete! Oh, Kids, Janie! Janie, call me! Oh, look at you. Oh, I could eat you up. Where's your mother? She went looking for you. With Uncle she... Billy. Daddy! Zozo, Zozo, my little ginger snap. How do you feel? Fine. Not a smidge of temperature. Not a smidge of temperature. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Hello. George. George, Mary. darling. Where are you? George, darling. Where are you? Oh, oh, oh George. Oh, George. 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 Oh, let me touch you. Let me touch you. Are you real? Mm. Oh, George, you have no idea what's happened to me. Well, we do know what's happened to George. Uh, his life has changed. He's been, if you will, wonderfully reborn, not by baptism, but by the opportunity he's had to see what life would have been like had he never been born. And for us as brothers and sisters in Christ, for us to know that life, well, could you imagine what life without Christ would be like? what life without Jesus would be like. Now you talk about depressing. You talk about a, a horror film or story. Or you talk about a nightmare. That's what that story would be like. But we do have Christ. We are forgiven. We have power to live a changed life. We wonderfully have been reborn and we can live uh, the new life like no other person can live. For example, we can live like Abraham. We trust implicitly in our God. We can live like Joseph. We turn our back on the advances of evil and temptations. Like Caleb and Joshua, we refuse to be discouraged because of superior numbers in opposition to what God's will is. Like Moses, we choose to suffer rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Like Aaron and her, we uphold the hands of our spiritual leaders with our prayers and support. Like Enoch, we walk in daily fellowship with our Lord. Like Jehoshaphat, we prepare our heart to seek the Lord. Like Gideon, we advance even though our friends and support is light. Like Paul, we forget those things which are behind us in the past year, and we press forward in faith and with forgiveness to what lies ahead. 
And like Andrew, we strive to lead family and friends and others to Christ Jesus as their Savior. Like Stephen, we manifest a caring heart for the, the hurting and the forgiving spirit toward those who seek to hurt and harm us. That's a different way of living. That, that's a changed way of living. That's a new way of living, totally. But we do not live like the world lives because we've been wonderfully reborn through baptism. We, we ought to be different. We ought to stand out. And in a God-pleasing and delightful way, we ought to stand out. Whether it's in the workplace, in the neighborhood, in our homes, in our families, people ought to notice that there's something different about you as a child of God. And then, wonderfully reborn through baptism, blesses us with the Holy Spirit for daily strength. Yeah, you might be wondering, you might be thinking, you know, that's all well and good, Pastor. It's all well and good as you read the scriptures to think that, yeah, people live this way and they live changed lives and new lives and they, they forgive themselves too because God has forgiven them. But then here's the icing on the cake. Here's the, the, the whipped cream and cherry on the top of the ice cream. And that is it's the Holy Spirit who gives you the kind of power and courage and strength and faith and love for others and compassion to get through all this. I, I just, I can't get over the fact that nothing really changed for George Bailey except that he got to see what life would be like had he never lived and he, he hated it, it was depressing. He had made a difference. And because of Christ living in you, you make a difference. And the ripples and the impact on other lives because of you, Christian, sons and daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you are making a difference day in and day out by the way you live your life for Christ. And, and even God will use our imperfections and our weaknesses and our mistakes and our failures. He will use it all for good. That's one of his promises in the Bible as well. Others may even mean something for evil. God will use it for good in your life like he did for Joseph in the Old Testament. All things work together for good to those who love God. Nothing is going to come your way. No season in your life that God isn't going to work it out and use it for good. It may be hard sometimes to accept and understand that. But that's what God has promised. You're new. You're changed. You're forgiven. You have the Holy Spirit. You have power in the name of Christ. St. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. My prayer for you is that in this year of 2018 and beyond, that others would see, your spouse would see, your children would see, your family, your co-workers, your classmates would see that there's something different and changed about you and that you're living life differently, that you are a new creation and the old has passed away. You're leaving it behind. You're leaving it behind. You're on a journey and you're leaving it behind. May God be praised as we live out our lives wonderfully reborn with great faith in our Lord and Savior who has promised to be with us. In his name, amen.